good morning welcome to another one we're out again we're somewhere new today we are here to do a long exposure we're here to shoot the celestial dawn which is down there in the distance and we're going to do some long exposures and you see these photographs on the side here that's the inspiration for today a few different photographs that i've seen popping up lately from different people on the facebook groups and stuff like that uh, pictures of long exposures of the celestial dawn i'm out with Denise, Mrs. C and Mr. O, Owen. And uh, the plan is, that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to shoot Celestial Dawn, the shipwreck at St. Uh, Livam, Livam St. Anne's. And while we're here, we're gonna do the jetty. And we're just on our way down to the bottom of the jetty now. It's a low tide, it's about eight o'clock in the morning. So yeah, join me on this one, eh? One thing that's nice about shooting in this sort of weather is it's dead calm, there's not a lot of wind, I can use the tripod properly, I'm not so worried about being blown off the jetty or the wind spray and stuff like that, it's not raining at the moment even though it's given a bit of rain this morning, so it's given me lots of time to be able to play with the composition and stuff like that. Composition is very, very simple. Um, let me switch this over to video for you and I'm going to show you, because I'm using my X-T4, uh, I've modified the bracket and I'm going to show you all about that later on, but it's growing on me, big style. Right, I'm going to switch this on to live view for you now so you can see what I'm doing. I've set up the um, pontoon on the jetty so that the jetty leads from the bottom corners and I'm probably going to crop it about here uh, so that it's a 10 by 8 sort of shape. And these are going to lead from the bottom corners, going to run all the way through the image, right the way down to the uh, marker can there. And then I'm going to, what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and eliminate this horizon. And I know that sounds uh, ominous is that the word I'm using but I'm going to blend the sky in I'm going to do a long exposure get all this nice and smoothed out I'm going to smooth out all the water around here and what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and eliminate this by dragging the sea and the sky together slightly it's hard to explain I might try and do a Photoshop video on it one day and then I'll get rid of that line there and then all that will just blend in together so that's the idea we're focusing somewhere around here because I think that'll be sharp enough at f11 to get everything in focus uh, so yeah, that's the idea. So we're going to put in some grads, uh, not some grads, we're going to put some ND filters on. I've got me filter ring on, um, and what we're going to start with is a 10 stop. We're going to see how much light this uh, closes down. As you can see, these are quite dark. This is a 10 stop case filter. They're magnetic, which is fantastic. All you've got to do is literally throw it on the front of the camera. We're not going to use a polarizer because we want to keep the glare, the light glare around it. Um, and the water's drifting up. As you can see, the water's coming past me further and further up the, up the jetty. Um, focus exactly in the middle like I said just gonna make sure the focus is sorted it's lost its focus let's just take that off while I get the focus point come back come back come back right we're just gonna check that focus right lovely there put that back on 
that's giving me a eight second exposure um, at f11 um, which we can give it a try let's give it a try two second time we'll get that one shot let's get one in the bag a safety a safety photograph and then we'll try and build up the exposure try and get a longer longer exposure what i'm hoping to try and get is like a like a minute maybe or half a minute excuse me I'm pulling my trousers up um, that was an eight second let's have a quick look and see what it looks like it's just slightly smoothed down i'm just going to overexpose it slightly because it's just, I'm just watching the histogram and that's taking me up to 13 seconds because at standard, because it's so bright, it was actually closing the exposure down or the, you know, the shutter speed time. So right, this is taking up to about 11 seconds now. So that's gonna give me my base image of nice and sharp boardwalk, nice and sharp can. And uh, now I've got to work on trying to make it really long and try and get all the, the smoothness of the water. It's looking quite nice and minimal. Right, so I'm gonna put on some more filters, do a little bit of calculation on my phone, try and work out what the time's gonna be, and then I'll get back to you and let you know what we're doing. Look, Mrs. C's joined me down the pier. She's a, keeps calling it a pier, it's a jetty. Uh, she's a little bit dubious about walking on water. And I know we're not Jesus or anything, but we're actually on the boardwalks. It's just really slippy and, and the water is coming up behind us. The only good thing is the jetty does not get covered in water. So as a safety net, babe, you won't get covered in water back there. It's uh, the water's down here. Um, but it is slippy. It is very slippy. Oh, excuse me, I've got a dribbly nose. Um, I've just taken a two minute exposure with two filters on. I've got the six stop and the 10 stop on. No chance, very, very dark. So I've just taken a plummet and uh, a bit of a, a wild guess and I've just wound it up to eight seconds. And the reason being is, I haven't got an app that calculates these. Um, Case could do with an app to calculate the filters. What I'm using is the ProGlass IRND uh, Lee filter. And I put it on a 50th of a second, which is what it was saying without the filters. And it's telling me I should have an exposure of 10 minutes, 40 seconds, which sounds a really long time. So I thought, I know what, let's do something really crazy. Let's just flick it on eight minutes and see what happens. So I'm not gonna get you standing there listening to me for eight minutes. So I'm gonna turn you off and I'll switch you back on in eight minutes time. Well, six minutes and 47 seconds, or 45 seconds, or 44 seconds time. <laughs> Right, exposure's done. That seems like an awful long wait for eight minutes. You can see Mr. Rose joined us now down here. Nice and gently paddy steps as we walk down. Um, eight minute exposure at F11 ISO 160. It's a little bit dark, but it's extremely smoothed out. As you can imagine, everything's been moving. So all, if anything that's moving is gonna be just a, a, a fuzz. Um, so it gives me a base shot to work on. It gives me something to play with and I should be able to make an image out of it. And if I do, have a look at it now and I'll also see if I can drag Mrs. C's off her as well if it worked and uh, let you have a look at that one. I'm going to get the camera down lower and get closer to the water so I've got loads of water and I'm going to poke the can up in the sky um, and then we're going to go down to Celestial Dawn because we were told there's not going to be a lot of water around it but already the water's already around it and um, in all fairness I think I'd rather be down there than here because that's the plan to do that. So 
thought I'd mention this while we're here. Just put my camera back away. Uh, and as you can see, I've got my cover on my bag. The reason I put the cover on my bag, not for the rain, is when you're putting it on muddy things and slippy things like this, the rain cover acts as a way of getting all the dirt and stuff. So this is a bit of a helpful tip. If you've got a separate rain cover, not a built-in one, um, I actually bought a separate one. You can actually put this cover on, it protects it from chucking it in the mud and the sand and stuff like that. And then when you get back, you can take this off, give it a wash, and your camera bag isn't covered in mud. We are now heading that direction to do Celestial Dawn. That's what we've come for. That's definitely the image I want to get. You can see behind us, we've got a couple of canoers just about to set off for the morning. I was going to say swim, but I don't suppose we're intending on swimming. Um, it's an ideal place for canoeing. Isn't it? You take your canoes down there, you sit in it and just have a cup of tea and wait for the tide to take you away. <laughs> I think they're kayaks. Kayaks. Sure Is there a difference between a canoe and a kayak? Just been put yeah. right again. Oh well. <laughs> right, yeah, Celestial Dawn's got our name on it. Um, let's make our way that way. In fact, it looks perfect where the light is. I don't, there's, I've, I've seen different images of it where the tide's right at the top of the, um, I was going to say hull, but it's not the hull. The hull's the bottom bit, it's underwater, but right on the top of the deck. Um, and on a really high tide, all you do is you get the mast sticking out. But uh, I actually quite like it as it is, and I know you can't really see it on here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. It's about there. Let's see if I can do anything with this to see if I can get you to focus. It's about there. You can just see it sticking out the water just there. Um, so, yeah, that's. That's the Celestial Dawn, it's just getting there. I know that there's a few people, Neil, um, uh, he's seen Neil, Mark, Mark McNeil, um, he lives up this way and he's shot up this way quite a lot. Uh, the daunting thing is having to walk on this grass and for someone that's not a local, it's a bit scary considering underneath the grass is all this mud. So uh, I'll talk to you when I get there because <laughs> it's a scary thought of walking across it. Um, a long lens though, a long lens from here would shoot it out straight out into the abyss out of that way. Um, there might be a bit of cloning to go on as well. But let's get down there, let's get a composition set up because this is really what I come for. And the conditions are almost perfect. No wind or very light wind, no rain, dry, uh, calm sea, so everything's going to be dead smooth. The grey's reflecting on the sea from the sky, so there's no colours to be worried about, or no over colours, no highlight blowing out or anything. And you've got the grey overcast sky which has got some slow movement. So conditions are pretty perfect for a long exposure black and white. So let these two catch up behind me because they're still down there doodling what they're doodling. And uh, yeah, I need to find this boat. You know, I said it wasn't gonna rain. Guess what? <laughs> it's raining. Oh well, typical, but it's not too windy. So that means we can actually get a brolly and hold a brolly over the top of the camera. Oh well, I'm still waiting for them to catch up with me. They are coming. Um, it's just I've got a bit of a spurt on because I want to go and try and get set up for this shot and uh, when I'm on a mission not a lot's going to get in my way. Bloody rain. Getting a little bit closer now. Uh, the masts are just over in front of me, just over there and uh, all I've got to do is work out how to get across this grassy green stuff not knowing what's underfoot and i'm sure mark mcneil is laughing at me if he's ever watching this saying oh what's up with you just get out there but uh, once in scotland i've mentioned before on this channel i stepped over a bit of a boggy area went up to my knee frightened me lots of so uh, yeah i'm a little bit intimidated by losing the ground be underneath me so I'm hoping there's going to be like a little trodden pathway and uh, someone's marked off some tripod points. <laughs> no, I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm sure it's pretty solid and if it starts to go, then I'll uh, I'll come back off of it. But the lights, the lights just reflecting on the masts now, which is, well, I can't tell where it is on the camera, but somewhere around there and the lights catching them, the sky is really, really gray and uh, I'm in a good position with nothing behind it now so this is kind of where I want to start on this side looking out that way and then move around it slightly so let's get over there 
Let's get a good look at this celestial dawn. Photographer down there at the moment, right up close, which gives you a bit of confidence, but look at that. Look at that for a photograph at some point. That's gonna be a must. This isn't too bad to walk on. Uh, now I'm down here, it's not too bad to walk on. It's pretty solid. I'm just gonna make sure I don't step into anything muddy. Uh, there are a few people that know I'm coming down this way from Facebook. So uh, yeah, maybe, maybe someone ended up coming and saying hello, but I'm just trying to work out where I wanna shoot it because I kinda like it from here and I kinda like the idea of having a long lens on it and pulling in the perspective. So I might start off here and then move across a little bit as long as this isn't too boggy underfoot just here. Um, but I'm on a little bit of a high, high ridge. So I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna start off somewhere like here. I'm staying on this nice little patch of grass and then I'm gonna be looking straight out there and uh, that should make quite a nice shot with a longer lens. Right, taking the shot, camera set up. Uh, I shot one at 140 mil and I've shot one at around 100 mil. Um, but I do need to get closer. The idea is getting a bit closer, I think, filling the frame a little bit more with the surroundings. And uh, that's the plan, I think. So I've got me shot from the distance. And the reason I wanted to get the shot from this distance is I wanted that little bit of grass in the foreground just to start off with like that. And then I'm gonna move up. Now I wanna get that gray, massive, epic shot. And uh, these two are trying to be really clever in front of me. Look at them. They're standing in front of the camera, Compton style. <laughs> I've just waited, I've just waited ages. What, 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 what? Have you got something to say? Have you got something to say? Bring it on, bring it on. Come on, come on, Br bring it on. I can't believe they've got the cheek to talk to me like that. Do they not know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, payback I think. They're walking off in front of me because that's what I do to everybody else. Right, the grass isn't too bad to walk on but I just think you need to be careful where we're stepping. So I'm going to put this back in the bag, put the wider lens back on and get up a bit closer um, because the shot I want is definitely up close but this sky is looking fantastic for a long exposure. Crap mud in the front. Uh, 
Alright. Don't you stand in my front of my camera. Where's you gonna you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it if you do, Compton. Change lenses, my lens isn't close enough. Well I'm here, camera's set up, celestial dawns in front of us, sky's looking absolutely immense, perfect conditions for this, perfect conditions. The pathway down here was dead easy as well, if I'd have walked further along there's a pathway that leads you right down to it, absolutely fantastic. I've already taken a quick shot, just going to check it, yep that's nice and focused and sharp, I'm going to chuck on a 10 stop and start with that, on she goes. It's going to give me a three second, five seconds. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bracket. Now, I'll tell you the reason I'm going to bracket on this. Two second timers on why I'm talking. The reason I'm going to bracket on this is rather than trying to work out the exposures above and below to try and get it just right with the times, like two seconds, five seconds, three seconds, ten seconds. If I bracket it, it will do it for me. I'm on F11, so that's fixed. I'm on ISO 160, so that's fixed. So all the camera's going to do is work out the shutter speed. So it's going to give me a variation of shutter speed. So if I do want a longer one, it's going to get a longer one. If it's too long and overexposed, it'll do me a shorter one. So that's a quicker and easier way of doing it without me having to mess around thinking about it. But I'm going to try and get the app out because I want to go for a two minute. I want a two minute or at least a minute exposure. So I'm going to try and get my app out, work out how to calculate these case filters with a, a timer that actually works. sitting here or bending down here listening to these two behind you they're working out exposures they're collaborating against me the two of them Owen's gone for a, a 10 minute exposure Denise is going for some technical I don't know what just listening to the pair of them you want to hear them you really want to hear them <laughs> they're enjoying themselves but this is what they come to shoot this is what they wanted to shoot for a while especially Denise um, that's that's done now that's uh, finished doing what it's doing and there's two exposures that look pretty good out of the five so uh, I'm now going to try and do a little bit something a bit different I'm going to chuck on I'm going to chuck on the so six stop. Uh, so this is the ND64 on top of the 10 stop. So that's going to give me 16 stops plus of light. And I'm just going to hazard a guess on this. I'm going to try, I'm going to put it onto timer and I'm going to go for a, a wild eight minute exposure at F, let's have a look, at F 6.4. And I'm just going to hit that shutter. I'm going to go back to a single shot and I'm just going to try an eight minute exposure. And then I'm going to get my phone out like so. And I'm going to try and work out what it tells me it should be. Um, I should have done a base exposure really, but I think the base exposure was about, I don't know. I don't even know why I'm going to pretend I know what it was, because I don't know what it was. Um, when this is finished, I'll get the base exposure, then I'll work it out, and we'll see what the difference is. They always say, to learn photography, you've got to go out and take a photograph. Se oh, can't see the wife's face. Mm -hmm. Seriously, you want to hear the three of us. We're all sitting here, we're messing with the apps. We're all going, well, I've got it on F6.4, I've got it on F13, I've got it on this, I've got it on that. We're all, we're all shooting. I'm supposed to know what I'm doing. <coughs> These guys aren't stupid. They're supposed to sort of know what they're doing, but we're all just guessing at the moment. But I've just turned my camera off halfway through an 80-minute exposure, about four yeah, minutes or something like that, and it looks pretty good. Um, so what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to take these filters off and I want to try and work out exactly, I'm going to try and take them off and work out exactly what the metering is so I know for the future what I can use to get a decent metering on these uh, case filters. So I'm going to flick my camera back to auto, um, I'm going to put it onto F8 and I'm going to just zoom that back out again because I've moved it. Um, setting my composition up with the boat on the right hand thirds which is where I like it lots of sky and stuff like that right so it is telling me at ISO 160 is 250th of a second so let's um, have a little look on this I'm on photo pills and uh, I'll see if I can record the screen for you so we can uh, show you what I'm doing on the screen so let's just click this I'm not the best of doing all this sort of stuff but uh, I'll certainly try for you Right, so we are on photo pills. What I've done is I've gone into the aperture and I've set my aperture now at f8. So we'll click OK. My ISO is on 160, as you can see there, which is OK. I'm going to put on a 16 stop filter, so it gives you a choice of 15, 16 stops. So I'm going to go 16 stops because I'm going to put a 10 and a 6, so 16 stops. Uh, that is now telling me 
that it should be a four minute, 22 second exposure, which is pretty rough, pretty much what I put on there before. So I'm gonna put my timer mode on and I'm gonna wind my exposure down to four minutes. So we've got four minutes, eight minutes. So if I go to four minutes, let's just see. If I go F 7.1, click OK, that's telling me three and a half minutes. So we'll stick to F8. That should be slightly underexposed. Um, with the filters on but whatever you do do not hit the shutter before you put your filters back on because you'll have an extremely extremely white photograph so there goes one we'll put the other one back on so we're gonna make sure the two second times this is a four minute exposure that should be slightly underexposed at f8 ISO 160 that's what this says anyway He's done his 10 minute exposure, he wants me to come and have a look. He says it's really, really good, so let's have a little look. Oh, I've got my tripod sticking out, right. So we click play and have a look how good this is. That was it. That can't have been it. Oh, is that it? Yeah. That's 16, the exposure's pretty good actually then. Yeah, yeah he's got the exposure right. Yeah, right, right. No, it's not a bad guess actually. Oh, no, 10, 10 minutes at F16. Oh, 10 minutes at F16. Uh, he got away with that just about. <laughs> But the light's great now. The light's actually lighting the boat up really, really well. So uh, hopefully this exposure is going to be spot on. Milky, they're going milky. You want to listen to us? We're just, we're what a bunch of amateurs, aren't we? I've got a minute and a half left. I'll switch you off, turn you back on, and I'll have a look and see what this picture's like. What are you on? Well, they always say, don't they, that if you want to learn how to take a photograph, just go out and take a photograph and see what results you get, and then it can, it'll, might stick in your head and you can tweak it either up or down, whatever the hell. So this is probably going to be a complete washout, but F11, eight minutes. I um, can't even remember what I've got there. I'm on ISO 200 on there because that's, I don't know. The lowest base ISO it'll go. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that anything lower than that, but we'll see. I have got rather a lot of filters on. <laughs> How many filters you got on there? A polarizer. Right. Polarizer. A ten stop. <laughs> ten stop. And I'm not sure what I think the other one. I don't know if it's a six or an eight. And a six stop or an eight stop. <laughs> Just to see. So we're, we're at twenty thing. stops yep. of light. Oh, three on. <laughs> 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 Mr. O's going three on. Which ones have you got though? 